as much as you you grow up in this like oh doubles is for fun and the secondary i mean it's a pretty good life there's a, there's enough to complain about for sure but singles is so hard it is so competitive it is so lonely and you know i the locker room at wimbledon is yeah. the same for the doubles <laughs> and the singles but that's all i'm saying that's that's my two cents on it so Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today we have, you're probably the newest member to Team T-Dub. This is Angela Kulikoff. Am I pronouncing that correct? The last name? Yeah, you got it. I don't even know how to pronounce it myself. I, <laughs> that's, that's my great. last name too. I don't even know. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go with your, I think this was your Twitter bio. I don't know if we're still calling it Twitter, but I do. Because anyways. Um, I do too. Okay. Pro tennis player, undrafted quarterback, the quarterback chick. We'll get into that. USC Trojan, sweatpant collector, yes, girl, zero star Michelin chef with a master's <laughs> degree, and a hidden tattoo, a sis- sissy face? I don't even know how to pronounce that, but <laughs> wait, what's the story there? <laughs> uh, that's uh, how long do we got? That's, uh, it's <laughs> Sisyphus. It's a Greek mythological story. Um, philosopher Albert Camus. Basically, the, what people might recognize the quote is, um, one must imagine Sisyphus happy, and it has to do with this whole story where uh, he was punished by the gods and condemned to push a boulder up a hill, and every time he got to the top of the hill, the boulder would roll back down. Oh, shoot! Uh, Wait, you just yeah, started... very... <laughs> Did really you manifest cynical, this huh? life? <laughs> it, is, it is a little bit, but it, it sounds negative and it sounds cynical, but the, the beauty in it is, and then the beauty in the quote and, and the way I saw it and why it's like such a, I guess such a life mantra for me is if you can picture it as Sisyphus enjoyed pushing that boulder more than anything. Um, yes. And that gave him more, mo- the most fulfilled. Actually, I think the full line is the suffering in itself is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. A little dark. We love an obstacle. (laughs) (laughs) A little dark to start. So I just go with, you know, everything is futile. Everything comes to an end. But if you can can soak in and enjoy the the struggle and everything that comes with it anyway, uh, it's all worth it. So between that that and the devastating loss in the Final Four at NCAAs in 2019, (laughs) it's hidden on my foot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which is so ironic because I feel like as athletes are like, do not get tattoos on your feet. You'll you'll have to get them redone every like year or so. It, does it wear off? Did were, it wear off? It, so it's really funny. It's like a very minimalist take. I stole it from something on Pinterest, I'll be honest. But <laughs> it's a very minimalist, just kind of line stick figure. And I used my ankle bone as the boulder. And so oh, it's cool. just Sisyphus pushing it. Um, it. He lost a leg. He's an amputee at the moment, but he's, he's still, struggling. But he's, he's still trudging on. Resilient. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Um, do you have other tattoos, or is that it? No, I I think I'm good. Um, okay. That one probably. I don't regret it. I, it. It didn't need to happen. It was definitely like a you know was devastated after that loss and pulled the trigger sort of deal. I mean, I had I had been thinking of it. There's like a, I have a Pinterest board. I don't know if people are still on Pinterest. I'm I'm not really. Allegedly, but. they are. I just coached a high school team, and all the high schoolers are on Pinterest. And I'm like, wait, what? We're still doing. Okay, that? good. Okay, yeah. Good. So you're you're trending. Feel, I don't want to feel too old, but uh, I you no. know I have like these old boards when that was big when I was like a teenager, and there's one that's just all the tattoos I would get if I would get a tattoo, but I wouldn't right? get a tattoo, and then I did get a tattoo, so. <laughs> Um, I think I'm done, but, uh, you know, I'm one more NCAA Final Four loss from another, so you never know. They're still coaching <laughs> to be devastated by but. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. I have those boards, too, but I have – I just got one – another one like two weeks ago but and it was like one of those like you I was uh it's been one I was thinking about getting and then I had like kind of a traumatizing experience relating to tennis and coaching and a team and someone yeah and I was like I'm getting it today (laughs) and just walked right in and I was like here's what I want let's do it and they're like come back in an hour I'm like perfect (laughs) you never know you You never know if you wake up in the morning and you're fine with it then it was it was it was fine well I love mine. Well. I, I love it. It's like mine's like the opposite. It says you got this. So it's just my little like oh, reminder. That's sexy. There you go. <laughs> like that's you got this. Too. It's not some, I got the positive. Not some 
There you go. Not some dark <laughs> suffering quote. <laughs> Well, and I was laughing. I saw your birthday is March 31st. So you're a fellow Aries, end of the month Aries. Mm-hmm. I'm March 29th. So I know I don't oh, know if you're into astrology or anything, but we're crazy girls. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> I I, yeah. That, I mean, like very passionate, <laughs> impulsive, but like, of course, you could say that about anyone. But anyways, that's fair. No, that, <laughs> okay. that checks out. <laughs> yeah. So we have so many things to talk about, but let's let's start from the beginning. What's your origin story with tennis? How'd you start? What was your background? Talk to me about junior tennis and then transitioning into college and all that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I was the most active, needed something to play with, needed a ball, needed a racket, needed something in my hands right out the gate. So um, tennis I found by accident. Um, I grew up in Burbank. Burbank Tennis Center was right down the street and had, I think, $5 tennis lessons on the weekend or something. Nice. <laughs> and, you know, we didn't know at the time. So my mom is, uh, my parents are both immigrants. My mom from the Philippines, my dad from Russia. Neither played any sports uh, and somehow just had the most sport crazy daughter they, you know, they weren't <laughs> expecting. But um, it was the first thing that was available. Available. It was cheap. You had no idea that tennis is anything but cheap, but... Right. You know, it was in the beginning. Um, so started taking a few lessons there. And then um, actually pretty quickly, the, the USTA um, over in Carson. So it was the Home Depot Center then. It's been like five other sponsored names since. I think Dignity Health yeah. Sports Park now. Um, they were sort of looking for and recruiting the next generation um, of baby hamsters, basically, to <laughs> see if we could... Uh, you know, turn them into pros. And so they found me super young. I was, uh, I think, seven when they brought me in for a camp. And then by by eight, they had me um, joining the the program and sort of doing that full-time schedule. So parents were a little bit reluctant to stop school, which is understandable as an adult, but as a child, I was upset about. Um, So we cut a deal with my school where I was allowed to be absent two to three days a week. Um, I maybe attended like Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, did that for a few years. And then in eighth grade, finally decided, Hey, we need to, we need to go all in, you know? Um, Yeah. So that was where my formal traditional education ended. Um, Are you a Laurel Springs graduate? No, it works. I'm a I'm a K twelve and Capistrano Connections Academy graduate. Nice. I mean, like if you and, know, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Everyone. Laurel Springs was legit. I don't know how I felt about uh, the quality of education I got with mine, and when I went to college, I was terrified because I knew I'd be exposed for it. Um, luckily, it. it thing, I can write well, and I coasted off of that. But Wait, yeah, um, what what is the master's degree in? The master's is in applied psychology. Nice. Um, okay. She's smart. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea what I wanted to do going into undergrad. Um, couldn't do math because like I said, I could write and that's the only reason Same. that I did okay in school. So I, I was able to coast off of being a good writer, but uh, I got absolutely exposed for math because I was effectively a seventh grade level of math going in yeah. and I still had to take the one math GE and I'm looking through this course list and it's all pre-calc and algebra or whatever and I was like there's no chance like everyone's gonna find out and there was a linguistics class and I'm thinking oh that's like words and language I can handle that um and that actually led me to a it was cognitive science was the name of the major okay. so it was yeah. a combination of psychology um tiny bit of math but not really uh philosophy and um computer science which I have oh. also managed to avoid, but uh, I loved it. That, that was really, I fa- basically I found psychology through that and um, fell in love with it. Uh, was doing it myself with the sports psychologist we had at USC um, and, you know, was learning about it, doing it myself. And then after COVID happened, I had an opportunity to, to get a master's and um, yeah, applied psychology is kind of a mix of business psychology and traditional organizational psychology. So I, I loved it and I'm uh, no regrets about the, the college pathway for myself. Um, that's cool. So yeah, that's the uh, short version, I suppose. <laughs> was, was it always USC for you or were you being recruited heavily by a bunch of top schools? It, w- it was tricky for me. So I did, I guess I skipped on this part. Um, I did have some pretty bad injuries around 
kind of the most important time, 15 to 17. I was Mm -hmm. basically off the map. Um, I had a knee surgery, recovery didn't go great. Um, I had a foot injury prior to that, that we thought the silver lining was would get a chance to heal and it did not. And then we went, oh, well, if it didn't heal, we we need to go in and cut that out too. So some mistakes, some mismanagement there. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have that many. I mean, I was a big prospect maybe before that at 14 as a freshman. Right. And then, I mean, I think I went in as a three star. Like there's a okay. blog out there by one of those web creeps that wrote about how I was a, like the official end of USC tennis. <laughs> Oh my um, God. I, I need to find it. I haven't been able to find it, but I've shown it to the, the rest of the, the SC alums, the rest of Team TW, basically, because they were <laughs> yeah. the superstars and I grew up looking up to them. And and there's this blog about how I'm officially the end of the era by recruiting me. Um, wow. So, yeah, it was, it was just that SoCal, um, you know, they were close by, they were near Carson, so... They had been following me a little bit more closely. They were able to drive up to Carson. It was Richard Gallion and Wes Knott at the time um, and came and saw me practice. And, um, you know, they they did gamble. They took a very huge chance on me, and I'm forever grateful to both of them for that. And, um, yeah, so it was one of those where I didn't want to leave home. Uh, some of that yeah. ties into the football that I know we'll get into. I was still yeah. coaching my younger brother. I wanted oh, to be I able to it. go home on weekends and, and be a part of that. So I was already probably confined to the SoCal schools. Um, mm-hmm. And I, you know, I loved USC right off my first visit. I thought, you know, there was definitely a private school element that I thought was pretty awesome. <laughs> Not going to yeah. lie, even the superficiality of that. But um, no, it, whenever people ask me for recruiting advice if I'm, for my recruiting story, I don't like telling it to them because I'm like, mine, it, it doesn't work. I got my, the only school I wanted and I was the only person there. Or <laughs> this was the only school interested in me and the only school I was interested in. Um, so I, you know, I'm grateful to them and I'm just very fortunate that that lined up for me. But um, yeah, it's, it was a tremendous experience. Um, and despite any of the struggles that went on while I was there, I, I loved every minute of it. That's awesome. And so did COVID happen while you were still undergrad? Um, I had just finished. So it was okay. my it was my senior year. Um, I was having my best singles year. Um, I think I was up to 15 in the country. Uh, then I was very hell bent on all American status and all those accolades. So yeah, uh, it, was, it was rough on me because I knew I was on track to doing that. Um, and we got cut around... I want to say February? I don't even remember. I think March. everybody's blocked out <laughs> their minds. It was so. like BMP, Paribas. That's only because yes. I remember when they canceled it and it was like, wait, what? This is a joke. There you go. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I, yeah, I, I finished, you know, I, I did my last few classes on Zoom and then oh thought that goodness. was it. And uh, and then the fifth year option was there. Unfortunately, so I got a little bit injured during covid um, So I didn't get to play very much my fifth year, but, you know, I still got to be a part of the team. I still, you know, attended everything I could and uh, I got a free master's out of it. So no, that's awesome. It's there. (laughs) That's really cool. And then talk to me a little bit about the transition from college to pros. And did you know that like, that's literally what you wanted to do? Or was there an option where you started to go into psychology and talk to me also about team T-Dub and the USC graduates who are, you guys are all so close and it's so cool to like watch the team on tour yeah. now talk about their influence as well for sure I mean I you know I grew up as a call it a USTA kid so you spend your entire junior career thinking I'm going pro first and if I do yeah. anything but go pro first I failed um took me a couple of years even just to get over that because I was thinking in college well I, I messed up like I was supposed to be winning Wimbledon right at 16 right um so I the whole time I was in college, the, the plan was to go pro. Um, the whole alum group had yeah. done it and I had watched them and I spent um, so much time in college comparing my collegiate results to theirs. And even my, my first year playing professionally, like, I don't know if they'll hear it from this, but there was 
a loss I took in a, like a very early 25k and I'm thinking I'm not good enough this is oh, never no. gonna happen <laughs> and I started digging in Sab's KK and Juju's uh, <laughs> deep in their ITF archives trying to find a loss they had suffered early on to justify that I'm allowed to lose oh my god uh, so you know it's it's, it's funny in, in in hindsight but no, them them doing it first definitely played a huge role in me believing I could do it and me saying, okay, they've done it. They had the same opportunities at SC that I did. Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of, you know, we talk about this in other aspects of life, but when you have an example and you kind of have role models or people to, to show that it's possible, it does make it seem that much more feasible. So for me, I mean, the first couple of years was getting that out of my head of I'm a failed prodigy or whatever um then there was a moment of accepting okay I'm not just a failed prodigy I'm actually at this point like I'm really behind I mean I can very confidently and comfortably say my freshman year sophomore year I mean I had zero prospects of playing professionally singles or doubles like this right. was kind of yeah you were good and you know enjoy college this is it and yeah. I did I got to a point at some point where I did start to accept all right I've got two years left and this is probably into the road. Um, my junior year doubles clicked. So I was playing with my best friend, Rihanna Valdez. Um, we kind of clicked and made a run to number one in the country and, uh, <laughs> made a run, just a casual run. <laughs> <laughs> a light, light stroll. Um, <laughs> but we were, yeah, we were the favorites going into the NCAA tournament and, um, winner of that if they're both American is typically a wild card into the US Open so in my head this was my shot this was yeah. gonna erase this is or this is gonna make up for the fail everything I had failed at in one fell swoop and that's that's what I'm saying it ended in a tattoo <laughs> it did not end in a ring in a wild card it ended in a tattoo so that's in my head how big I had blown that up this was gonna make up for an entire failed career career and um so you know that obviously didn't pen out exactly how I wanted but did definitely show okay you you kind of can play this is you got this yeah you got this you're right there yeah exactly you you can still try um and then uh COVID unfortunately happened the next year and you know actually COVID for me was maybe one of the best things that could have happened for my career I have to say um just because getting that extended period Mm -hmm. of time where there's no tournaments where you can actually go back to the drawing board and yeah you know, like obviously we talk about trying to get better every day and making tweaks and improvements but when you're competing like every two weeks you you don't have time to actually make a grip adjustment or a adjust, you know like once you're in your 20s there's not much true fixing going on anymore yeah there's no time um but because of that i did have a chance to really start from scratch rebuild ground strokes change serve change volleys whatever um and between that and actually the the time like just the amount of time in the day because there was nothing else to do right uh, I went absolutely insane with the training (laughs) like this is six hours of tennis and two hours of fitness and watching matches and just out of my mind because you know all of us were out of our mind and that was how I dealt with it and um it worked great I do believe without that patch I don't know if I would have been good enough to make it as far as I have but did kind of bite me later because it absolutely was overtraining and um got to the end of that year it was actually Christmas day hitting with saps okay um just something funky happened in my back and it seemed out of nowhere it was we were hitting short court and all of a sudden I oh man spasmed up and um I I still deal with it I mean it, Uh. it uh Pretty much ended my singles career. So the way my, my pro career started was we could not figure out what was wrong with my back. All my scans were clean despite all the, the pain I was in. Um, but I could extend. I could flex. I could move. I just couldn't rotate. And the style of doubles I was playing anyway was serve and volley, return and volley. So I didn't really have to rotate much. Okay. <laughs> and the thinking was let's just go throw you out to play some doubles then and experience the tour and get used to the life. And uh, while we rehab it, and then we'll give singles a shot when you're better. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really get much better <laughs> rotational-wise, but we would joke, you know, oh, well, what happens if my doubles takes off and what are we going to do? And we'd go, ha-ha, that's a good problem to have. We'll worry about that <laughs> when it happens. And then it happened. <laughs> and um, 
I was kind of forced to make the decision, all right, you're now almost about to be making the main draw of Grand Slams, Mm -hmm. or we can go play 15Ks in Tunisia. (laughs) Yeah. uh, That wasn't that, I'm going to be honest, it was not a hard decision. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Well, and then... Even, like, Sabrina is, like, one of the first people that has ever, like, said it to me the way she talks about being, like, a, like doubles just made sense in so many different ways as a business model. And I'm like, yes. you're, like, the first player that I've ever actually heard, like, say it in such a smart way. So, yeah, that makes no, I'm, sense. I'm with her. Sabs is yeah. the most savvy, like, understands. She's my go-to. She's, like, She's my awesome. personal <laughs> And I owe her a million bobas for, for help. But uh, no, I would love to one day, I, I don't know if, whether it's in the form of a, a book or a podcast or something, just to share that as much as you, you grow up in this like, oh, doubles is for fun and the secondary, I mean, it's a pretty good life. There's, a, there's enough to complain about for sure, but singles is so hard. It is so competitive. It is so lonely. And, you know, I the locker room at Wimbledon is yeah. the same for the doubles <laughs> and the singles. But that's all I'm saying. That's that's my two cents on it. So, uh, I'm, yeah, I'd love to hear what she, she had to say because she's right. Like, I think it is something worth thinking about earlier on in, uh, in junior careers even. Or, I mean, even I'm not saying necessarily specialized, but not seeing it as such a – Oh, am I playing doubles this week? Sure, I want to have some fun. No, go go play doubles. Go, go play doubles. Those skills and it yeah. can it can places. So it looks like yeah, it looks a little less stressful, a lot more fun. And yes. uh, every time I check out the players that are doubles specialists, they're definitely yeah. having a better time than the stress of the singles grind. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So that's not a bad thing. That's that's an interesting. I didn't know that's how you became a double specialist. So that's really a cool story. I mean, kind of yeah. cool, but like you know, I'm <laughs> not cool that I you got have, injured. <laughs> right. I have the occasional night that I have a what if, but not not really too many regrets about it. I, I also could have played singles and thought it was too difficult and never have even attempted doubles because it was too much. So right. call it a wash. Things happen well, for a reason. And like <laughs> you said something that I like to talk about sometimes with people not on the podcast, but um, the USTA model, I heard recently that like they were trying to like f- figure out better ways to like produce top talent and that the goal of everyone being professional is like so hard to actually attain and like yeah. to to think of that like how wild it is just to like grow up and like that is what your end goal is and then if mm-hmm. you don't get there like that crippling like oh my god I didn't do it it's like so it it seems cooler now to be like adjusting our goals and our like realistic expectations and like it's okay yeah. if you're not number one in the world. Yes. There's like, one per exactly one person in the world who is number one in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's I think their model has changed anyway. I think the general view on the pathway to becoming a professional in tennis has shifted with time, with technology, with players that create you know crafted their own direction so that was still part of kind of the Serena Sharapova era where like yes you you were winner Tracy Austin you were winning Wimbledon (laughs) at 16 and you were done by you know I'm 25 25. yeah this was old like I'm supposed to be retiring now um but yeah I, I think they've they've shifted that I think people in general are seeing there's more than one way to skin a cat and uh the college pathway uh for doubles, so I won't speak for singles because I think I might be out of place because uh, I didn't do it. But for doubles, absolutely works. I mean, the, the level of doubles in college tennis is rather high. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I can quantify it, but, I, you know, we were – I would say at least when I was there, we were playing at a top 300, top 250 level. So definitely speed and things to adjust to later, but – it's high, um, and I yeah. credit I absolutely credit college tennis for setting me up for um, playing on tour. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I kind of want to hit on a few more things with this year and your what looks what next year looks like. So, do you have any like 
best moments of 2023 and like mm-hmm. also worst moments, which I know you've had some challenging weeks. I, I got a lot of bad for it. No, it's it's funny because I it, I did have a lot of things go wrong this year. I my back right off the gate, my first uh, flight to uh, New Zealand for the Aussie swing came back. So had an injury right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Um took the first quarter of the year just trying to figure out what went wrong there. Uh, the next quarter of the year was I could not get my bags. And you were <laughs> tremendous at all. And Warehouse and oh TW gosh. Europe were my saving, my lifeline because I couldn't bring anything with me. Um, and strings is like the toughest one because everyone kept telling me, why don't you have your string? And I said, because if you bring your string through TSA, they confiscate it because it's a weapon. So you have to check it. Which meant I just kept left and right having nothing with me. So that was difficult. Um, And then this back chapter of the year has been just uh, some really bad luck with partners uh, getting injured and some weird things with deadlines. And I'm kind of on a stretch right now where in my last five events, I've been able to complete one because without something going wrong, it's I, the worst string of luck I may have ever, it might be your record. I might ask the WTA to add me to the awards list this year. Just for that. <laughs> um, Worst luck of the so, year goes to. <laughs> tr- truly, it, it, it is. But, you know, it's funny because despite that, like, they keep complaining and talking about how this year was awful and the results were not what I expected and this was terrible. But I also look at it and I'm like, I played at every slam this year that's awesome Uh, yeah and that was that was the only dream in my head like when I started when I left after I you know lost this devastating match at NCAAs that was it like I just want to play a slam yeah and I will be happy and I would have given up anything to do that and I did so every time that I do find myself feeling sorry and upset and this went wrong and everyone was out to get me and this was the worst year I'm like no this is more than you dreamed of like, you don't have any business being upset about how awful this went when, you know, I played the Australian Open. I, I actually had a really cool experience playing in the Australian Open uh, through a college match. They actually okay. had USC oh, I remember playing this. Yeah. the other USC, South Carolina, there. Yeah. yeah, And in my head, I was like, this is as high as I will go. Aww. Like, you have to soak this in. It will never happen. So I did that. Um, my mom's dream was always the French Open. Um, She decorated my room with all this Parisian themed, I don't even know what, and I just let her do it because it made her happy. But um, that was always her dream. So I got to bring her and my whole family to the French Open. So that was kind of this this big thing I always had in the back of my head. Um, Wimbledon blew my mind. I I, I kind of knew it would, but I remember getting there the first day. And I don't have allergies or anything. I don't, my eyes don't water. And... I like my eyes kept watering. I kept thinking, yeah. I gotta go to the doctor. I need someone <laughs> to give me eye drops. I actually asked, can I see a doctor? And then I realized, no, stupid, you're crying. That's what this is. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. So Wimbledon was, I mean, it was almost too much for me. Like I remember even being on court playing my match. Um, I kept looking like at the scoreboard. And I also was on a really cool court. I was on, I don't remember the number, but it's the one directly in front of the entrance. Um, okay two center court. So you can see it. You can actually see that inscription on the wall uh, or on the ceiling. And so I just remember my eyes kept drifting at the scoreboard and it's, you know, that beautiful Ivy Rolex, whatever. Yeah. And I put in, like, I felt like I couldn't put my feet on. And it wasn't a nerves thing. Like I've played in slams at this point. I was, you know, feeling like I belonged there, but I just kept looking at it. And I was like, I've had this vision of that in my head, right? That we all have had since we were young. Yeah. And that's real. And I could not grasp that that was a real thing. Um, so, yeah, Wimbledon was the most tremendous uh, dream experience, I think, for me. That didn't involve a trophy or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then U.S. Open again. I mean, U.S. Open when you're an American is just the most exciting, high energy atmosphere um, ordeal. So, you know, I... I can complain all I want that I sort of got rocked in my sophomore year, but um, I I just keep reminding myself of, you know, three years ago. I have this uh, little 
tradition, I guess, that I started where there's this court in uh, Claremont, California, actually, just a random public court, and there's a bunch of chickens uh, <laughs> randomly next to this court. And I filmed out of nowhere this like video diary before I played my first pro event that was like, this is the beginning of my career. These are all the things I want to do. And yes. then every year on that day, I've repeated it. Aww. And I just think back to that video, and I'm like, I know that that kid would have no problem hacked off her left arm for this year. So that's, so cool. that's at the end of the day, that's how, that's how I'm going to remember it instead of the, I had no bags. I had no partner. I had no. <laughs> <laughs> well, and just think of all the experience you just collected just this year and like think uh, parallel yeah. it to your college experience, like your sophomore year in college. Now your mm-hmm. junior year, like you're going to, next year is going to be amazing. I hope so. I mean, I've stacked enough karma for it, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're you're putting in the work, you're pushing the rock, like, we're good. Like, hopefully yeah. it's it's all it's all good after this. Um, so what what's on the agenda for the first part of 2024? Are you going to Australia? And also, are you going to get any time off? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. I, uh, the back half or the reason I'm still playing everyone else is on vacation and I'm still out here because I'm trying to make up for all these unfortunate things that happened. But, um, because I didn't really get to play my last few events, I didn't get to recover my ranking the way I wanted to. So I'm still waiting on the WTA schedule to fill out. They've released the two fifties and on, mm-hmm. um, I want to see what the one twenty five schedule is going to look like. Cause I'm likely going to spend some time, playing those um I'm in a fun section now where because the beginning of the year this year was so rough with the back injury I don't defend anything for the next like five months which is great because now I'm sort of back to rookie season just running the scoreboard up as high as I can yes Um, so I'm waiting on them I gotta wait I need that calendar to come out and then um you know if an opportunity to still go to Australia does appear if I can find a, a partner that's that's looking for someone of course I'm not gonna say no to a slam opportunity but if not um there's some higher itfs and hopefully some 125s that i'll start out with and um hopefully rebuild so i can get back to the slam level for french open and on nice that sounds exciting and aren't there a few in california at the beginning of the year or no am i making that up maybe that's the middle of the year there's a there's a 35 that's a new one it's a 35 in arcadia okay um, See, <coughs> it's in that's her deal out <laughs> Yes, it is. And I, I live kind of near there, too. Um, I'm in Claremont. My parents are in Burbank. Arcadia is, like, right in the middle. Um, a 35 is kind of a, a lower event I probably wouldn't play, but because it's yeah. in my backyard. We were kind of joking. Maybe we start my singles career. Yes, <laughs> but really. <laughs> That's kind of in the, the joke we're running. So uh, we'll see where I'm at. If I think I need a longer preseason um or maybe if I need an off season and then a preseason, it might get cut. But you know that could be a fun one. Maybe Dila will play doubles with me. I don't know. Hey, I mean, <laughs> you've seen exactly. I was gonna say you've seen her take her little backseat to competition. And she, yeah. I've never seen her happier. Like I've known her for a few years now, and like she's happier now than I think even when she was ranked at her highest on tour. Yeah. Like she's she's thriving. She's- She's so knowledgeable, and I think another one that I kind of looked up to with how much she, like, she really appreciated the depth of every experience the tour gave her. It wasn't just about, you know, um, traveling and winning and competing. Like, she she really, her life points, I think, is, like, the the hashtag (laughs) she runs. Um, Yeah, she's someone that, like, really has some tremendous recognition and gratitude for every yeah. moment good or bad that tennis brought her and that's something I looked up to growing up as well so um I'm glad yeah she's been able to now transition that into coaching and, and everything else she's doing and having that same passion and uh recognition of, of the goodness and the badness and all the lessons in it as well so it's great to see totally Okay, we're gonna we're gonna transition into the football side of things. It's, it's football season. Um, talk to me about how the QB chick came to be. How did this all start? And explain it from start to finish. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, like I said, growing up, 
always a ball in my hands. Didn't matter what kind of ball it was. So there was a baseball lying around, a kickball, a football. I was playing uh, recess when I was still in traditional school. Was always two-hand touch with the boys. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I absolutely loved it. I adored it. But obviously there, at least then, weren't any opportunities for me to do anything with that. Um, right. When I got injured from that, that patch, I guess, whatever, 15 to 17, that makes my brother about age seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, you know, I had nothing to do. I had spent my whole life on this like insane pro training schedule. And all of a sudden I'm like on crutches and a boot and just stuck at home. Uh, and he's kind of coming of age to start, you know, finding his niche and, um, like sports. And I did definitely steer him <laughs> biasedly into that direction. Um, but no, he, he could throw, I will say, from the get-go. Remember, I make fun of him still for this. He kind of walked like a penguin. He didn't seem like he had the whatever athletic gene that I had, but he had a hell of an arm. And I remember okay. thinking, you're right, probably can't be like a receiver. He's not going to, you know, excel in soccer or anything, but baseball or football, I don't know anything about baseball, but let's let's go turn this kid into a quarterback. So yeah. I put this poor seven-year-old boy through like the same life I was living like boot camp academy uh, one-on-one with me like he went to school he'd come back from school I would write his workouts we had this squishy uh USC ball actually even before USC was in the picture and a hallway and we would throw it and work on his mechanics in the hallway and meanwhile, I'm learning all of this while he's in school on Instagram and YouTube because there's oh all gosh. these quarter like quarterback specific coaches, and I'm just watching one after another, soaking all of this in, and then doing it with him. Um, so that whole patch that I was injured, I was coaching him, and you know you got to know it and be able to do it yourself to teach yeah. it. So I was getting pretty good too. And um, one day, his coach. Um, or his, his private QB coach, his name is Steve Clayman. He's like an unbelievable um, family friend to us at, at this point. But he just saw us randomly at Burbank High School. And, you know, it's an interesting thing to see. You have this <laughs> insane female big sister, like, barking at this little kid and comes over. And, you know, he started working with him and has been working with him ever since. But he posted a video just of, you know, he took some videos of me throwing with him and... She posted it, you know, put some cool music in the background. Yeah. And posted it on Instagram. And it, he didn't have many followers, and it somehow still got like 30 or 40,000 views. Okay. Um, I went, all right, that's kind of interesting. So just for fun, I started mm-hmm. filming a few things. I made this whole concept. I called it the QB chick. And um, it was videos with my brother Chris of us together. Sometimes it was me throwing him routes, sometimes it was him throwing me routes. And, um, it was just kind of silly and for fun. You know, there were a couple of ac- bigger accounts like Overtime and Hurdles and Jukes that people might have heard of that would pick up one of my videos and repost it and it would get a, a million or something views and even more unbelievably awful comments that are <laughs> funny. If you have tough skin and you're a tennis player who's used to the death threats you're getting weekly, it's right. funny. Uh, my parents, my, my dad would lose his mind and feel the need to start replying and I'd have to shut that down. But, oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, it was it was all fun and games. I had no idea what I was doing with it in the beginning. Um, I did actually get a few messages from other younger girls that were telling me, I want to try out for my football team or ask me for advice. And that was, I think, where it shifted in my head. And I realized that there was some purpose or meaning yeah. beyond silly fun and games and yeah. uh, I guess yeah potential for impact in in what I was doing with it so it was great to build those relationships with them and um you know see and they would send videos of whatever they were doing and ask for coaching which was hilarious but um yeah I you know it was it was fun and games and it was mostly centered around just trying to build my brother and uh give him an opportunity to play competitive high level sports and um and it worked yeah <laughs> so well, yeah i was gonna say he's playing right now right <laughs> he is he just finished his uh he just played his last snap of high school ball oh um, man so he's a senior in high school and uh he started for um john burroughs high school in burbank um led them to i think their first 
conference championship in nice. 10 years. And, you know, it was, it was cool. Cause he did kind of, I didn't go to high school. Right. So I didn't experience any of that, yeah. you know, high school team spirit and whatnot. And he totally got to live this hometown hero. Like Aww. everyone knows him and the city knows him and uh, it's cute and it's fun and it's great for me. And my, it's funny. My parents don't know a thing. I mean, for how little they know about tennis, they know even less about football. Um, and I think that's for the better because then you don't have to have a, a crazy helicopter. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, no, it's it's fun for them and for us to get to go to his games and just see him um, go be the, the rock star he is. So um, hopefully he'll get to play at the next level. I mean, yeah. he, he had a good season and, um, you know, we're, we're waiting on some recruitment, some offers and things to come through. But uh, he'll find his path and I know he'll... Uh, he'll end up where, where he belongs and, um, you know, he wants it and ultimately it's up to him. So yeah, uh, I, that's so cool. I'm excited to see where, where he, he lands. I love that. Um, and you kind of, you had your QB account and you've just kind of like, sh- not shut it down cause it's still there, but you're like <laughs> only doing your own. Um, are you still, throwing the ball around or is that still like yeah. happening pretty often <laughs> it, it's gonna start happening more so um I kept them separate for a while because I in the beginning just felt like nobody's gonna care about my tennis and I also I think a part of me and maybe ego driven wanted to see could I stand alone on my tennis could I one day be right. good enough at tennis that people cared about me for that so I kept them separate um I actually did have some opportunity. And this is, I was in college right before NIL started. So NIL okay. started the year okay. I left. And yeah. I did get some interest. I had Adidas reach out to me. I had Overtime reach out to me. And I wasn't allowed to reply to them because I would lose my eligibility. So yeah. um, that's crazy. That kind of, that kind of sucked because that was, you know, that could have been a really interesting business financial opportunity for me. And yeah. Whatever. Didn't happen. But, um, <laughs> That was part of what between that and then playing on tour and getting very busy with the transition and everything. The QB chick account didn't die, but just was put on the it's table. On the side. Yeah. A little bit. Um, but yeah, I just I think this year, um, it was my brother's senior year, so I was a little bit more involved again with going to his games. I luckily in just the way the schedule worked out, got the opportunity to attend more of his games. Um, that sort of sucked me a little bit back into that world. That's cool. Um, and then my current boyfriend that I, I met, was going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, I will just rip it up for you. He, uh, <laughs> Thank you. He plays for the Los Angeles Rams. And so getting back into that world, I think was so exciting and just brought back, you know, how much, how much I loved that sport. I mean, there was a, there was a time in my life I could probably tell you I loved football more than I did tennis. And now that I've been spending more time in it, it's happening again. I have to say. Hey, I believe it. Well, and I was going to say, I also want to say real quick, because you mentioned it, um, flag football is starting to be very popular in high schools for girls. And yeah. then also, you know, I mean, like back when I went to college, we had a kicker that was female. But now who was it this year in college that had a female? There was a female on the raw. Is it University of Colorado or is it? I don't, um, know. I, I don't know the school. I remember seeing. Was it D1? I thought so. That's pretty insane. It could have been. It was something a kicker. Kicker got hurt and they brought her, they signed or signed her. They brought her up. She played on the soccer team and they brought her. Yeah. Up. And like, well, and that's the crazy thing too with NFL. You all of a sudden, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. So we're going <laughs> to put that out there first. But our kicker was like a soccer player in, yeah. in college. So it's like the crossover is crazy. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's there. And um, I, I did get reached out to by the lingerie football league. <laughs> on the QB chick account they did uh, that was a hard no from me um, but that was it that was the only opportunity that there was to, that's crazy to play football um, and then there were a couple flag leagues that started building and I did compete in one flag tournament nice um, 
And it was one one day event, but it was super fun. Uh, I had my strength coach from SC, uh, Darian, join me. She was like my my main receiver, so I loved that. And then yeah, now it's it's building. They're having it, and uh, I think there's some D three schools that have uh, legit flag football teams. Yeah. And the newest development is that it's in the Olympics. Um, That's in crazy. Oh man! So the second I heard that. Uh, that was a huge, oh my God, fire that lit under me. That's, I mean, that's real. That's like a real opportunity to do. Did you just start a team in LA? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> I'm, I mean, they, no, I, I'm dead serious. I'm figuring out who and where I can do this, but the uh, they're having a virtual combine right now. Oh, okay. It's the US national, I don't even know what the acronym is, but um, I need to to submit my film because I'm yes. dead serious interested. It. It's oh my god. LA 2028, I'd be 30 years old. But Serena's winning slams pregnant at 30 whatever. So Oh man, yeah. I'm, <laughs> how old I is Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers is getting up right. there. I mean. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I uh, I absolutely have that circled somewhere on a calendar and um, That's cool would love to get to try my hand at making that a reality. So that was part of the, you know, I think it's, it's time to combine them into, to one, one person. I don't have to separate. People will only care about this or yeah. I will think that I'm lesser because I coasted off of it's whatever, I'm not doing this for other people. This is a thing I love, a thing that I not lost because something happened. It was just tennis gets busy and took me away from it. And, um, you know, life has been great in putting people and experiences that helped me find my way back. And uh, I've missed it. And I forgot how much I missed it. So that's um, cool. Yeah, I'm grateful to them for, for helping me find my way back. Nice. I love that. Um, and I know you've been at some of the Rams games. because <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny because I was like looking through her Instagram like, oh, so cool. She was on the field for a Rams game. And then I saw your boyfriend at the US Open. I was like, oh, okay, I see. <laughs> Which that's amazing. Um, were you always a Rams fan or who's like your go to team? Who did you love? When no, you not at up? all. Yeah. Um, I, I had a tough weekend because um, I grew up a Seahawks fan. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I have, yeah, I have family in Seattle. I have this just love affair with Seattle in general. Okay. So I was always a, a Seahawks fan. And, um, you know, the Rams have only been here for a few years anyway, yeah, so I wouldn't get yeah. a bandwagon because we want a Super Bowl. Yeah. Better than that. <laughs> um, but no, it, the, it, this weekend, we, for anyone that follows, it was a comeback 17-16 win off a missed kick. Um, and my boyfriend, Alex, is a long snapper, so I'm now very involved and know the intricacies of special teams. So just yeah. seeing this, like, we had a, you know, huge walk-off special teams operation and then they missed theirs added to that for me but um yeah it's I was not a Rams fan but obviously am am now (laughs) well and I have to ask did he slide into your dms or how did you guys meet um it's a good it's actually a really good story so I came back from the French Open, and typically you stay overseas and you stay in Europe because the turnaround to Wimbledon is so quick. But um, I'm a very big homebody. I don't do well with extended time away from home. I knew it was the wrong move, and I didn't care. I said, I want to go home even if it's for a week. I just need to recharge, and then I will come back. Um, But because everybody stays overseas, that meant I had nobody to hit with in LA. Oh, no. Um, So I've never done this before, but I put up a story on my Instagram and I just said anybody around in LA to hit with me this week. And, um, I got a reply from the bio is LA Rams long snapper and mechanical (laughs) engineer. And I'm like, what is this? Don't know who this person is. You don't play tennis. What's going on? And the reply was like, well, if you're, you know, I'm not very good, but if you're desperate, I'd love to hit with you. Oh my god! And I just started me like, no, 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 you can snap to me. We could, I'm thinking this is some like QV chick, whatever. And yeah. he was very persistent. He was like, no, I can play and start sending me photos of what? him hitting because he played high school tennis. And okay. you can tell in a photo if someone's yeah. legit. You can see yeah. that contact, just the yeah. way their hand is positioned. And I was like, oh my God, he can kind of play. 
So um, I didn't end up hitting with him during that week, but I met up with him uh, the day before I left to go back to Europe. Uh, we actually went golfing. Um, okay. So we golfed, spent a couple of hours, had a great time, you know, really liked him, but knew this is my job. This is now I'm going to leave for six weeks and this is why I hate my job. And, you know, he's not going to wait around and, um, you know, this, this sucks. I was really bummed, but he was the best sport about it. He Aww. was texting me and FaceTiming me the whole time I was away in, in Europe. And then, uh, when I came back, he was in, um, rookie or in, in training camp, training camp. Yeah. Um, over in, in Irvine is where they, they do that. So, um, one of my coaches was down there as well. So I would come down and practice and sometimes, you know, he'd even join me at practice and we hung out a bit and, um, yeah, after a while, you know, we, awesome. we had as much as I travel so much, we ended up, our schedules were lining up really well. And when we had times to spend time together and, um, yeah, he's, it was just one of those like unbelievable fell out of the sky stories but I we joke all the time he loves tennis probably more than I do and I might love football (laughs) more than he does so um yeah it's a it's been really fun and I'm just very lucky that he he did fall into my life because he's he's been awesome that's cute screw Travis and Taylor (laughs) (laughs) I get you would not believe how many jokes I I get about that because the the timeline is actually identical there too gosh so I like the amount of just oh first there's Taylor Swift and Angela Kulikov have <laughs> infiltrated the NFL right here. So, Let's go. It's nonstop, but whatever. I, I brush it off. He 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 takes it like a champ. But um, That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. And I mean, since you love it so much, it's so it's got to be so cool to be at the games too when you can be there. Yes, it's. I mean, I. I actually, in college, I didn't like going to college football games. Um, Student section was too rowdy. Yeah, too crazy. (laughs) Yeah, I was a bit of a loser in college. You know, I didn't drink. I didn't really party. So it was just too many drunk, loud people where I'm trying to watch the game. So my typical uh, deal with that in college was I would go for the first half to spend time with my team, and then I would bail and go to the team room so I could finish the rest of it. I'd get some Chipotle and finish the rest of the game. (laughs) Uh, on the couch where I belong. So I was convinced I don't like going to games in person. Like I want to just be able to see it. And um, I felt like if I went to a game, I was watching it on the TV screen anyway. So whatever. But no, after going to a few, I'd never been in SoFi. Um, So just being in that stadium is just impressive. I've heard. I've heard it's amazing. Bit of it is uh, incredible. So yeah, it's it's super fun to to go be there. Um, it's it's nerve wracking when you have a person that's <laughs> playing and you see how big these guys are. And I've been, you know, on the field and up close, and your head is just like, oh my god, <laughs> you could eat me! Like you yeah. could actually, eat me. and you know, oh my god, he's they're hitting each other, and I have to sit here and watch it. So there's there's a lot of emotion that that goes into it, but it's very exciting and. Um, and really fun to get to do it. I actually, the, the last tournament I played um, was in Midland. It was a one, WTA 125 in Midland. Mm-hmm. And Alex was playing um, the Packers on Sunday. And I knew nice. my event was done Saturday. And it's a hop and a skip away. But it's, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no boat to take you across the lake. So you had to drive it. So we made, um, one of my coaches, Jake, and I made a big effort and drove uh all the way around and we're able to catch the game at Lambeau, which is, That's you know, so a cool. football bucket list uh, thing to do. Um, so that was, that was super fun getting to, to see that go. We went on the field for that as well. So Dang. just stepping on those grounds was, uh, I mean, it's the Wimbledon, I feel like. Of, <laughs> right. Of football. So that was uh, one of those, like we were on the fence about doing it just because the, it was so much effort, but was so worth it and just one of those like I've I've gotten to have so many of these experiences that I know I will remember for the rest of my life and um yeah I'm just super grateful and lucky and fortunate that it's it's lined up that way but it's been so fun I've I've loved it amazing I love that um I go to training camp for the Cowboys every year and I like I'm such like not just like a 
tennis player, but like a coach and I, I love to practice. So like I geek out just like watching them practice play after play yeah. after play after play. And I'm just like, this yeah. is so cool. So I can only imagine. It's yeah, like getting to kids, you know, obviously I get stories and I get involved and I watch film with him and I, I do all oh, these yeah. things and learning, I mean, the, the ins and outs of it. Um, it's I mean, I'm jealous. I can't lie. Like, I look at them like, oh, my God, I would give anything for to have an opportunity to to be a part of something like this on, on this scale. Um, and, you know, maybe that is what the Olympics will kind of be. A, right? a glimmer of, but yeah, it's yeah, it's it's such a blast that, uh, you know, and, and the guys know it. I feel like I've, I've asked Alex plenty of times you know are people are people generally good you know what's actually you know in the tennis world everyone has their opinion about you know it's it's tough and in tennis it's a solo sport so yeah you know, people say you almost have to be selfish in order to to make it and I don't know if that's necessarily true but it does definitely lead to some people never having been to school never being in so many social environments and situations like there's not not everyone is the most friendly on this tour. So I agree. Yeah, I was curious. You know, what would you say about the NFL? Do these guys? Um, are these guys general? I think the way I phrased it was, how many guys would you actually be willing to or voluntarily go get a meal with? Yeah, and he was like, most of them. He's like, That's most cool. of these are just really good guys. They're really appreciative of the opportunity. They know what a dream it is, and um, that's that's awesome to hear. And any of his teammates that I've met are just you know happy you know, really just, yeah, appreciative and um, respectful and just good, good people. Um, So that's, it makes it that much better when you watch it on TV and you wonder, you know, are you guys actually, or is this a facade? Yeah, right. (laughs) For the most part, it it sounds like they're good. Um, That's great to hear. I love that. I feel like you have a football tattoo in your future, just saying. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I don't know about football, but I remember earlier on, I had said I would never get a tattoo except for if I made the Olympics. That was what I said. So just saying, maybe we'll there some rings with like a football going through the rings or something. That was, oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Now I'm like, I'm ready to watch this all play out. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, wow, you're so cool. <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, you're so cool. Can I be friends with you? Um, before we wrap this up, because we've already been chatting for like an hour and you are. Oh, shoot. Uh, I know. I'm like watching the sunset behind you too. I'm like, oh, it's so pretty out oh, there. Oh, I missed that. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> I was going to do a quick gear check back to tennis real quick because you love, and you're not the only one, but you love the Ultra 100, but not the current Ultra 100. I went right? back. Yeah, you yeah. went back. <laughs> I I did. Li- so I, I'm i going to preface all of this with I'm not the cleanest ball striker. Okay. <laughs> like I, I'm, I, I think you're hard on yourself. That's what I've decided. <laughs> I, I am. I definitely suffer from self-deprecating humor, but <laughs> objectively, I don't hit the center. Like when I pop strings, I very rarely pop the center. It's a of shank. The string. <laughs> yes, nice. it's it's not it's not clean, and that's fine. I do other things well, clearly, yeah. if I make it this far. But um, the new one, I liked when I hit the center. I thought it gave me more reward than the older one does. Yeah. Um, I was getting a little bit more zip on my serve. Um, volley stuck really well. I I did think it's a very good racket. It just doesn't have the same level of forgiveness that the V3 had. Yeah. And everyone on tour makes fun of me for this because when they see the racket, they realize it's not even the tour model. It's literally right. the one for beginners and <laughs> intermediate players. And I have to say the same thing. I don't hit the center of my strings very often. You're like, I love the shanks. (laughs) I I need a forgiving beginner's racket. Oh, my gosh. And um, so, yeah, so I've been using it. I think at the end of this year, I've decided when I come home, I need to demo um, everything. Yeah. Because it's it's time. I think I've gotten a little better. We tweaked a few grips. So I think I'm hitting the center a little more often. Uh, and I'd like a little bit more reward from the racket than just forgiveness, but. Well, and like, didn't you do an SOS on Instagram for that too? Because like we had none, like none, none. <laughs> you're yes. Like, no, you Instagram, scoured eBay. And- 
I did. I, I swear to God, the stories I have put up on Instagram this year have been <laughs> like the best things for me. I mean, uh, I got how I've gotten housing in a few places from that. I did get someone to find me a pro shop that had, um, I think, like eight, and I bought them out nice. so that yes. I, I had the racket. Um, so yeah, highly recommend if you have any dilemma in your life, uh, equipment to no love, boyfriend, yeah. just shoot it out there. I might try it. I might try it out. <laughs> Does he have any friends that are on the cowboy? No, I'm just kidding. I saw Dak has a girlfriend, but it's okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Yes. I think, yeah, you're going to have to, it just makes me laugh because a year ago, Amina Bectus was in this situation with her gear and she was like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, SOS. And then she, I'm, I don't know if you're friends with her or not, but she's like, yeah, "Yeah, she just reached a career high of 80 something, 87. And she called tennis warehouse and stocked up and bought so many rackets. So she never runs (laughs) out. (laughs) <laughs> which I'm just I like I, I know I was like I totally get it um no if you find something that were I mean I literally had to switch to the new one I did uh four months of the year with it did have the injuries and a few other things that are probably more to blame but was like I, I'm not winning anymore I'm going back because I won a lot of matches with the yeah. old one yeah um and I, so I did but yeah I think I've I get nervous every week because I know, okay, it, it does crack on me because, yeah. again, it's not meant it's for old. professional use, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I get nervous all the time. I'm going to run out, and then that's it, and then I have nothing. So this – We'll find something. When I go something. home this last week, I'm going to – We'll do I wanna a big try demo. All the X's. I want to try uh, the Technofiber. I think there's yeah. a new Selenko racket. Yep. The white out and the blackout. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the Wilson shift I need to give a look to. So Okay. Nice. Those yeah. will hopefully I can find something in that. Yeah. But we'll I see. think yeah, I think we'll be able to fi- figure out figure it out. And that will be fun for you too to try something. Yes. Try new try new things. Exactly. Nice. Free uh free improvement, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, wow. And what string do you use again? Is it a luck string? Yes, I'm very loyal to Big Banger 125. Big Banger. Okay, that's yes. that's one that I've I've dabbled in a few others because I had no choice with no string or right. whatever dilemma yeah. I was. But but now you um, know. <laughs> once I started playing with that, I, I I think that's by far the best string. I mean, biased, but you're not alone. Not- it's very popular. <laughs> yeah. And that helps. That helps when you don't get your bags because the chances that yeah. somebody around you is going to have that. Uh, I noticed a lot of girls on tour don't have 125. No. They have different different gauges, so that's the only thing that's been difficult. But um, I've sort of bulletproofed my elbows and wrists and shoulder and forearms over the years. So I know it gets a knock for that, but my mindset on it is if the string makes you better, then you have to train yourself to use the string and not so much the string is... And of course, there are people who do have long-standing chronic injuries, and I I do understand it's a it's a tough one. Even physically, when I string the racket, it goes through my fingers. But yeah, um, yeah, I think it's been super helpful for me. So I I literally do like prehab throughout the week. That's in part so I can continue using Big Banger. <laughs> No, I'm like you. I have like arms of steel at this point. I'm like, give me a thick gauge and crank it up (laughs) in a stiff racket. We love it. Uh, Yeah, nice. Okay, well, I'm not gonna take up any of your your more of your time. We're at words. Um, but you are amazing and awesome, and this is such a fun (laughs) chat. And I'm like actually so excited to like watch the year unfold for you in, in 2024 because I think you've got a lot of good stuff coming. If I know anything, you know based on <laughs> all the work you've put in, I, I'm I'm manifesting it for you. <laughs> I hope you're right. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> um, let everyone know where they can follow you on Instagram and any of your socials. Yeah, um, Instagram and Twitter and dabbling in TikTok, but feeling a little old because I haven't gotten the hang of it yet, <laughs> are all at Angela Kulikov. Um, the the QB chick does exist. I don't plan to delete the account. It's there for the memes. Um, but I do intend to start uh, posting more football content. Um, do it. And when I do, that will be done on Angela Kulikov. So if yes. you'd like to see the story, go ahead and check out the QB chick. on. I think it's on Twitter as well. 
But, uh, yeah, anything moving forward is, is going to be on, on at Angela Kulikov. So nice. There you go. <laughs> and I we always say that D. Lau has, like, really good social game. But I have to give you a plug because your social videos and reels and all that are so good. And, like, you posted one and I was, like, crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was so it was like your it was your whole story of like how far you've come and it might have been had having to do with that court with the chickens but it was so yes. good yes thank you it was so I, good. it was a hobby what you know part of the homeschool deal I got a uh my first macbook and uh it had iMovie and so I did when I was younger have an interest in editing a little bit and you know last year on tour I needed something to fill my my time because things did shift and um I I love writing I love storytelling I liked editing so I yeah started trying to share a little bit of the the truth of the tour and then um in all fairness I haven't posted one in a while not out of you know I get I get crap from people sometimes that are like oh once it really got tough you stopped posting and like, no that's not what it is I just kind of got busy trying to fix busy. how hard it was right. but um yeah I, I'll get I'll get back to it um I, yeah. I enjoyed getting to to share that but I'm glad I'm glad you like it then oh it I love it so much- <laughs> and even your YouTube shorts for Tennis Warehouse have been amazing. I've had other players say, like, pull yours up. And they're like, oh, my gosh, how am I supposed to do it like her? And I'm like, I don't know. She did that. <laughs> so, I'm glad. Yes. I'm glad. So keep kicking ass. Best of luck on the next tournament. I'm hoping, like, you make it not only through the first round, but, like, all the way to the finals. Bring home the dub. <laughs> I could use that. I could. I just need to get on the court right now, honestly. <laughs> like, if I get to the coin toss at this point, I'm yes. like, let's freaking go. <laughs> You're like, fine. I didn't get the coin toss. It's fine. <laughs> at least I'm here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm wishing you all the best. As the year wraps up, I can't believe it the year is wrapping up but you are you are so awesome and we are gonna post all your links so everyone can follow and play along in 2024 with you i love it all right well thanks for chatting that was fun yeah so much fun thank you and happy hitting (laughs) thank you thank you